If you're trying to decide between the iPhone 16 and the iPhone 16 Pro, there are loads of things to consider. So here are 32 of them. And if you want the ultimate protection for the latest iPhones, ESR has you covered with their newest cases offering up to a three time military grade drop protection. More on ESR later in the video. Okay, so the first thing that you need to know is that no matter which iPhone 16 model you get, they all come with Apple intelligence. With features such as summarizing text, composing text, a much more powerful Siri that's contextually aware, and much more. However, most of these features will not be available at launch, and if you live in the EU, you won't get any of these features due to EU regulations. They'll probably only come next year, although the exact date is unknown yet. Then both the standard and the pro models also feature the customizable action button that replaces the mute switch. And both also feature the new camera control button, which is actually my favorite new feature out of them all, as it lets you quickly launch the camera as well as zoom in and out, plus control more camera settings simply by swiping your finger on it. This also allows for visual intelligence, an Apple intelligence feature that lets you scan an object or a place to immediately get more info on. So even if you just get the standard models, you're not missing out on this. Same goes for the new minimum brightness level of one nit, both models have this. So reading at night should be far easier on the eyes and in direct sunlight, they can both go as high as 2000 nits. And if you drop them, they both feature the 50% stronger ceramic shield glass on the front, as well as Wi-Fi 7 for up to four times faster speeds than Wi-Fi 6C. And both also feature the faster 25 watt maxi charging up from 15 watts of before, with Qi charging 2 now being supported as well, up to 15 watts. There's also a new anti-reflective lens coating on the main module that should help minimize reflections at nighttime, although the iPhone 15 Pros actually had this as well. The camera includes a new nanoscale coating to reduce lens flare. For some reason, Apple secretly removed this from their website, so maybe this is a better version of it. And both feature Apple's latest photographic styles, which we already had before, but now we can tweak them even more thanks to this control pad right here. Now, this is where all the similarities end and where all the differences and advantages of the Pro models begin. For example, the Pro models feature larger screens. 6.3 inches on the 16 Pro as opposed to 6.1 on the 16, and 6.9 inches on the 16 Pro Max as opposed to 6.7 on the 16 Plus. This actually does make the phones larger, but hey, if you're looking for just bigger screens, then the Pro models have this. Additionally, these displays also have thinner bezels compared to the standard models, so they will look more modern. However, one of the bigger display differences is Pro Motion. The standard models still have a 60Hz refresh rate only, as opposed to the dynamic 120Hz refresh rates on the Pro models, and this honestly makes such a huge difference when using them. We've got a powerful A18 chip inside the standard models, but the 60Hz refresh rate really limits them. So I'd say that ProMotion is literally the number one reason to go for the Pro models. Another reason, although smaller, is always on. Just like on almost every Android phone out there, the display stays on even when your iPhone is locked in this low power mode. So you can still see your time, your notifications, and your beautiful new wallpaper from our Apple wallpapers, which is actually part of my new 8K gradient pack that I made, uh, links in the description down below. Another reason to go for the Pro models is for the colors. While the 16 colors are more fun, the 16 Pro colors are more professional, so to say with the new Desert Titanium and Natural Titanium looking especially classic. And of course, as per their names, the Pro models also use a titanium chassis as opposed to aluminium on the standard models. And titanium is a more durable material, so it should last you longer. Okay, so earlier I mentioned ESR's super protective range of iPhone cases. Each case offers a thinner profile and faster MagSafe charging thanks to their unlimited MagSafe design, which actually produces the back panel's size whilst being twice as magnetic as Apple's own cases. Every case also comes with an unobtrusive camera island stash stand to watch content or use standby mode, while staying out of the way of any MagSafe accessories. To maximize drop protection while staying slim, ESR's classic hybrid case utilizes air guard corners to keep your device damage free. And for extra color and comfort, their cloud soft cases are great too. Rocket users will love ESR's CyberTough case, which offers a drop protection of up to 23 feet in this robust design. And our tough two-step screen protectors are super easy to apply too. Find your perfect iPhone 16 case by checking ESR using the links below. Okay, now back to the materials discussion. Since titanium is heavier than aluminium, 
combined with the larger size of the Pro models, makes them about 30 grams heavier than the standard models, which is actually pretty substantial for a phone. On the plus side, the Pro models, which by the way are close to half a milliliter thicker, do come with larger batteries and a substantially longer battery life. 5 hours more of video playback on the 16 Pro compared to the 16, and 6 hours more on the 16 Pro Max compared to the 16 Plus, which is major. Which brings me to the camera. And here, despite the same 48 megapixel main sensor resolution, the main camera sensor on the Pro models is actually superior. It's slightly larger for slightly better load of performance, and also has a much faster sensor readout for some serious video improvements. More on those later. But the ultrawide on the Pro models is also a 48 megapixel sensor as opposed to 12, so your ultrawide shots will be far sharper when you manually switch to the 48 megapixel mode. And same goes for macro shots, which both phones support, but the Pro models can also take them at 48 megapixels. The Pro models also have a third camera module on the back, which is the dedicated 5x zoom module. You still have that 2x sensor crop zoom on the standard models, which the Pro models also have, but the Pro models can then zoom further thanks to that dedicated 5x module. So at a 5x or even 10x magnification, you can still get a decent quality image, unlike the standard models. Then the Pro models also feature the LiDAR sensor on the back, which lets you take night portrait shots as well as use AR apps like the Measure app more accurately. And we also get Pro Raw on the Pro models, which is essentially Apple's version of RAW for photos which both models can take with third-party apps. A Pro Raw is more processed than True Raw, making it easier to edit, while also retaining a lot of extra detail. So if you plan on editing your photos before posting, then the Pro models will offer you more flexibility. And you can take 48 megapixel Pro Raw photos using either the main camera or the ultrawide. Additionally, there's also a new JPEG Excel format on the Pro models that is less compressed than both JPEG and HKIC offering a higher image quality, but at larger file sizes. And just like we've got ProRAW for photos, we've also got the equivalent for videos, which is ProRes. And this is also exclusive to the Pro models. ProRes essentially retains more highlight and shadow detail in the video that you can then recover later. The footage is also going to be cleaner in terms of noise, and there is very little compression to it. So the only downside is that the file sizes are pretty massive. The Pro models also let you record in log, which is this very flat look, which further helps for grading afterwards. You can still shoot log on the standard models if you use a third-party app like Kino, just not ProRes or ProRes Log. However, there is one more video advantage to the Pro models, and that is 4K 120 video. Other phones like the Sony Xperia 1 Mark VI or the S24 Ultra can also do this, but what's unique about the 16 Pros is that they can shoot 4K 120 in ProRes as well by connecting an external SSD. And you can also choose to shoot in 120 FPS by default and then slow the footage down afterwards as opposed to being forced to shoot in slow motion all the time like on the S24 Ultra. Another advantage to the Pro models is the new four microphone studio quality array with a lower noise floor. And thanks to this, we can now also isolate background voices in a video after we've taken it by making the voices completely silent or blending them more into the video like in a movie. Or you can also use this in voice memos to record your voice on top of a song playing and then separate it afterwards. Once you've taken these videos, transferring them to your computer is going to be much faster if you've got a Pro model. As we've got 10 gigabit per second USB-C transfer speeds from the USB-C port compared to just 480 megabits per second on the standard models. And speaking of storage, not only do the Pro models have an additional one terabyte of storage option, but a base version of the 16 Pro Max actually comes with 256 gigabytes of storage as opposed to 128 like on all the other models. Also, while the CPU and neural engine performance of the A18 chip inside the iPhone 16s and the A18 Pro inside the iPhone 16 Pros is basically the same, the GPU isn't, as the standard models have one GPU core disabled. Essentially, the A18 is a bin version of the A18 Pro chip. So in games, you will see higher frame rates on the Pro models. And while both models feature an improved thermal system, the one on the Pro models seems to be even more advanced, with an additional graphite aluminium substructure. So longer gaming sessions should run even better on the Pro models because of this. And these are all the main differences between the standard and the Pro models. I think for most people, the standard models are fine, However, if you can find an iPhone 15 Pro refurbished, that's actually going to be an even better option than the iPhone 16. As aside from the camera button, we get almost everything else. Plus, 
that 120 hertz promotion display as well. But let me know, what do you guys think? And do subscribe for more iPhone 16 videos. Also check out our app Wallpapers for some amazing AK quality designs. Uh, and yeah, stay tuned for more content. I'm Daniel, from Zone of Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zone of Tech, signing out. Cheers. Yeah.